All right. What's a new video? There's a new video. I'm calling this one Ancestor Piety Found in Serpent Veneration, the Royal Symbol of Egypt, State Formation, and Government. So this one's going to be in several parts. Um, I don't want to make them too long. And I want to try to group some of the information together in separate parts. So this will be part one. The roots of the Egyptian state, the first state to exist in the world, comes from earlier pre-existing religious beliefs spanning across East Africa. Now this next paragraph here, number two, this is really important to get a, a good understanding of, of this. Particular, particularly the beliefs of ancestor piety, which is the promise that your parents ask you to make to them before they before the day that they die, that you will always remember them. It's the duty to fulfill this promise that you make by always observing their life and therefore keeping them alive so that they still exist. Because as their children, it is your natural obligation since birth to venerate them, which means to honor them, to respect them, and through acts of ritual devotion to your dead parents, especially your father, such as through prayer and private worship to them, you are fulfilling this obligation. Now you should, you should really read that three or four times and, and take that seriously because <clears throat> I think that this is the main fi foundational principle that all of the states of the world are are founded on. This ancestor piety is found in the serpent worship found throughout Africa. And this is one of the main fundamental principles of the Egyptian hierarchy who created the Egyptian state. Hambly says that the invocation of the serpent, this means calling for it, on all of occasions is related to government. And I highlighted it there because of its importance. The Egyptian state, meaning the beginning of the first dynasty, was the north. When the, when the north and south became united through ritual and conquest was created, this is the state. Uh, it doesn't really make sense, does it? Okay, I'm just trying to give you the meaning of the Egyptian state here. So the Egyptian state begins at the first dynasty when the north and the south become united through ritual after the conquest. This, that's how the state was created. And this is the definition of the state. Was created by the hierarchical religious leaders, the priesthood of Ra, and centered around the god Heru or Horus, which created the family institution of Egypt from which its government was born. This is expressed through the symbols of the two Egyptian cobras and the sun. The sun and the serpent symbols together as one. The two cobras used are to show the duality of nature and the universe. The evidence of this is plentiful seen in the ritual to sacrifice, just like Jesus was sacrificed, the king, once he is seen as being too old to rule or too old to be a fierce warrior who can protect his family, 
and he is he will be replaced by his son found in the most important story or myth of the world the story of Ra and Horus against the followers of Set the duality of the snakes makes them antagonists to each other as in one is good and one is evil or as in the sun is seen as fire in the Nile River which flows and seen from above looks like a snake is the water so the fire and water originally thought of by the ancient ancient East Africans as a sacred symbol the totem of their tribe which it was originally called meaning the serpent was originally called or invoked for help whenever there was bad weather They made images of the snake from metals, clay, and wood, and that sacrifice in humans was a part of the veneration of the serpent. They were kept in sacred groves of trees near water, and the water that they touched was holy, just like the Nile. The snake symbolizes the war god, and that the spirits of the ancestors enter, enter the serpent. That the ancestor in this meaning is God, and therefore the serpent becomes God, and his sons are reincarnated in the snake after death. The kings and gods are reincarnated in the serpent. It symbolizes masculinity and a symbol of the penis. Now a, si a side note on this, you know, is you're going to see nowadays how our government has evolved here in the United States. These ancient beliefs have become heavily eroded, right? You look at how men are treated nowadays and the thing with equality and, um, you know, all, all this stuff that's going on. I don't have to go into all of it but you see here what the ancient meaning what the ancient thought you know what these ancient men thought who created these civilizations you know we got masculinity we got the penis here we got father and the son the war god warriors fire, water. According to Wilfred Hambly, all of his research has led him to believe that serpent worship originated in Uganda, Africa. And according to John Feeney, serpent worship was almost universal in ancient times and its remains can probably be found on every continent. The Egyptians, Phoenicians, Indians, Tyrians, Peruvians, Mexicans, and Celtic people were all sun and serpent worshippers. The American Indians, as late as 1741, had a serpent and sun tattooed on their chest. And in Africa, particularly, Python worship is found in Liberia, Niger, Nigeria, Benin, Uganda, Senegal, the Longo Coast, Northeast Congo, and most of all of Northeast Africa. And if you want to read more about this, here's the two resources for this portion. Uh, we got Wilford Hambly, Serpent Worship in Africa, and we got John Feeney, uh, who book, uh, on prehistoric traditions and customs in connection with sun and serpent worship. All right, thank you for listening. I'm going to make another part two of this, and it'll probably be maybe at least two or three parts, maybe four. We'll see, and I'll keep continuing on. All right, take care. Thank you.